Uh, but yeah, we're. I, I mean, you can do whatever you want wherever you want now, right? From your, from your, as you call it, your wardrobe room. It, it, that's what it is. Actually, a walk-in wardrobe that uh, yeah. that we set up to do the show on podcast radio, which is this yeah. new sh- station in London. It's been going about six months, I think, and it's on the radio. It's on the air in London. It's on now, the air you, in Manchester. Where, are we on here now? Yeah. Well, we're recording, and it'll be on the yeah. air next week. Oh, but yeah, we well, yeah. I'm on- I want to move to London. Could I move to London? No, how, and I'm being serious now. How hard would it be to work on this? And I want to hear about this podcast. What do you call it again? Podcast what? Podcast, podcast radio. It's a radio station that plays podcasts. So I'm going to talk to the boss and see if we can get the shit show on there. Yeah. I mean, we've got to do that. We've well, got that, Alan Alder on there and we've got... Yeah. Uh, we've got Bean on there? What's that? Is, you know Bean from Kevin and Bean? Kevin, Kevin and Bean. And, that's right. He's a good friend of mine now. He yeah. moved to London. And, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and Bean is Bean is uh, is a, is a pod jock, and he introduces the podcasts. He introduces mine. He introduces this show. Uh, what, what, what's Bean's a pod, jock? pod jock. So he's just like a tracker. He just goes like, "Hey, it's Grand Mac now coming up. Here's Grand Mac." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and then know. he usually says something insulting. I mean, last week he said. Um, he said, "If there was a statue uh, of Graham Mack in London, he says, I'm so- sure somebody would push it over." <laughs> <laughs> All right, jingle out. See, boys and girls in radio, now you jingle out. If you exactly. say something like that, Bean just said, you just jingle out on that one. I yeah. love that. Yeah, jingle yeah. out, man. Hit the hit the quarter hour, man. Don't forget the PPM. Just come on strong. I remember a guy, and it's a pretty well known. It actually, was uh, it was um. Bean's old boss and my old boss, Kevin Weatherly. He told mm-hmm. me, just be funny on the eights. All right. Why on the eights? Well, because that's when PPM started. And, and oh, then they okay. came yeah. and we did that for a second. And then it became Jack FM. But it was like, it, it's like going into a party and someone says to you, hey, man, you know, do something crazy. Yeah. Yeah. What, what are you talking about? I mean, it's just, they just took the lifeblood out of radio. They just took it out. It's like the fact that you and I could just sit here and babble is great. I would move to London in a minute, but let me ask you this. So this show thing you do yeah. on this podcast network, whatever it is, yeah. uh, I thought you left radio. I thought you had, you got booted out like I got booted out. Yeah, I oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, since last time we we spoke, last time we spoke was yeah. on the air when you were on that Westwood One show. We spoke on yes. that show a couple of times. Okay. Since I spoke to you, which I think is only a couple of years ago, I've been fired twice. <laughs> <laughs> we do. General managers, radio consultants, radio, are all idiots because yeah. they believe that you could fire the good ones cheaper, yeah. by the way, and hire the cheaper ones to pull it off. And they can't do it. No. They just can't. So you're, and then now they're all of a sudden I'm seeing articles show up and you see the same trades that I see. Oh yeah. Radio is realizing that it had fired the talented guys and replaced them with monkeys and it doesn't seem to work. One, yeah. guy said to me, one guy said to me, you know what? He's walking around the room. He's showing me, he's trying to get me to go to his station. And he says, uh, seriously, we could get a monkey to do your job. And I said, well, you should get, and not, my, that's a quote. And I know that you know the guy and I would tell you the guy, but he's passed away. So think about it. He was also featured in the Howard Stern movie. So figure it out. Okay. Yeah. And he says to me, yeah, I could get a monkey to do your job. I said, you ought to get a monkey to do your job. I don't know if you saw my Gmail. My Gmail has a picture of a monkey with a loop hat on. It's a <laughs> yeah, real monkey. that's what that's about. Right. That's what it's about. He's a real monkey. He came into the studio and we played poker together one day. And you know what? That monkey could do my job. <laughs> I realized he could do my job. There's no but, question about it. But but look at it, Johnny. For those who are outside the radio business, yeah, here's here, here's a couple of truths about radio business that might surprise people. It is the only job in the world where you are paid to talk and the boss continually tells you to shut up. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I like that. Uh, that Graham Mack guy is fantastic. Uh, but if you two would just stop talking, I would really appreciate it because it seems to be interrupting the music. Where else? I'm going to ask you this seriously, ladies and gentlemen. Where else can you get a Beatles song on the radio? You can't get them. They're going to play one for you if they would just shut their fucking mouths. Yeah. Uh, and, and and it's it's a lot. business it's a business and this might shock people as well where the oh, most wait, can, we swear, can we swear on yours? Of I course, swore. of course. Oh, yeah, of course. God bless you. So it's it's a business where you take a guy who gets a job as an air personality. Yeah. And mm-hmm. the ones that suck 
at being air personalities, they get to be promoted to be the boss. Yeah. <laughs> and it's then right. the people who do not know how to be good air personalities because they sucked at it, then yeah. they start coaching coaching people who do know how to do it and they so there is no way this thing can possibly work if the it's people who make the decisions are the people who failed yeah. surely it, the people who should succeed should be the ones in charge hallelujah ladies and gentlemen <laughs> Graham Mack has said the, the, everything you just said is the bible <laughs> It's unbelievable. And you know what the radio people today are really, really good at? The management, they're really good at doing everything they can to keep their own jobs. That's to their job. That's their only that's their that's their only goal is to keep their job. Fail yeah. up. They fail up. It's weird yeah. you go like this. Well, that guy's fired. We talked about some people you know, earlier and we're like, how wait a minute, how'd that guy get another job? And they just keep going. And you're right. Now they're consultants. Consulting it, what? Consult this. Yeah. 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 How many consultants have never had a number one more? You had a number one show yeah. on the loop in Chicago for something like 14 years. How many uh -huh. consultants have that pedigree? <laughs> and they listen to them rather than Johnny B. Well, I don't, I don't know. I got to tell you something. The only thing I can say is that I always had fun doing it, and yeah. uh, and I was allowed to do what I wanted to do to a degree. Yeah. And when you stop doing that, when they start adjusting, when the consultants are listening to the sponsors and the sponsors are running radio, yeah, then you know you've got a problem. It's not brain surgery. Just open it up, let good people on, let them talk, have some fun, and you can find music anywhere. I mean, really, come on with this. You know what yeah. I mean? You can find it anywhere, pretty much. But uh, when I was, the, the last time I was in London, so go back to let me move to London. Yeah. If I chose to move to London, yeah. would that be difficult in this in this environment? Do Can I live near your wardrobe room there, right inside the wardrobe Yeah, of course room? you can. I mean, Bean, Bean has, has moved here from, yeah. uh, well, he, he was on the end of Los Angeles, but he moved here from New Orleans. Um, he's yeah. moved here, but apart from the work he's got at podcast radio, he has actually found it quite difficult to find, um, to find radio work here Yeah, because they're a bit scared because he's successful and knows what he's doing. <laughs> you know, no, that really, that, that really what, frightens them. But that is my, my question, Graham. How would they, why would they welcome a guy over there? I, how would I fit in? It's your, you know, to me, local radio, when I say local, you know, is the, is the magic of radio. When you're talking about the place you're in, if I don't know anything about the place I'm in, I mean, well, is that, a, that's a I, pretty I think, bad thing. I think Johnny, you would notice things about London that Londoners have stopped noticing. Yeah. You would see things and talk about things on the air that people just like great comedians when, when you go like, I, that, I, that's always happened though. I've never even thought yeah. about that. Yeah, that is kind of strange. You would pick up on all that. Yeah, so you know, be, you, yeah, know right. you would. No, I'm not saying that you're right. That's a compliment. I'm saying because I remember uh, when they offered me a job in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. So they said I was in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Once again, not bragging. I went to uh, Phoenix and I said, I don't know anything about Phoenix. I can't go to Phoenix. But that talking about why are all these old people driving around in cars like this? Why are all these, they're blocking the traffic. And you're <laughs> right. And then it became, hey, I didn't realize everyone is from someplace else in Phoenix. And they're all thinking the same thing. But in London, I don't know if that's the case. I mean, people yeah, I, just. I think, I think it worked. I mean, I, I'm British, but I started on the radio in Australia. And I yeah. was just, I was really open. I just went on the end and said, you know, look, I don't understand this. I don't, and like you know, place names, a lot of Australian place names, those Aboriginal words, I, you know, they'd hand me a weather report and I'd be like, oh, the traffic, and I'd just yeah. go, look, you're going to have to help me out here. And the audience yeah. love helping you out. They'll ring you up. And, you know, right. what the first, first Australian radio station I worked on, two PK parks in the central west of New South Wales, five hours drive west of Sydney. And a lady rang up on my first show and she phrased it this way. She said, oh, you're our new announcer. She didn't say, <laughs> she didn't say, oh, you're the new announcer. Yeah. Or she said, you're our new announcer. Yeah. Because the station in their mind belonged to them. Yeah. And that really tells you that that's why you're there. You're there for yeah. them. We, you, you, are, you belong to them. Yeah. That's yeah. what it's about. She said, you're our new announcer. I love so, that. Yeah. Uh, and so story. I had the wrong accent and, and everything, yeah. but it worked. Yeah, I love that story because you're right. To me, it's like, it's really what's always driven me is them. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You out there, if they're calling in, they always take me in places I never think to go. And they're always funnier and more entertaining. And I always let them be entertaining. If you're starting to think this is like, I got to do a big show for you, you know, then you're, you're done. Let them. Let One them. of the greatest things yeah. about your show is the loon line. Look, they're crazy. They're all nuts. <laughs> yeah. Well, just yeah. like Johnny and the leisure suits, you know, yeah, it's, it's yeah, you know, yeah. we're all crazy in Chicago. I mean, you yeah. are. Um, that's what it is. All these years. <laughs> yeah. stir, no, no. Stir crazy after all these years. Do you think that you had more fun doing live radio than doing uh, the podcast or doing yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah. I can see. I can see why your new show that you've decided instead yeah. of doing a recorded podcast and putting it out, you do yeah. a live show which goes out here. It's Saturday afternoon about four p.m. I know it's it's eleven. Is it uh, yeah, ten a.m. ten a.m. Yeah. Yeah. in Chicago is, is yeah. four p.m. here, and so you can listen to it live, and that really is the best when I can catch it live. I listen to podcasts if I miss it but the, the live thing it radio is live it's a live yeah. medium and the people calling up and you don't know what's gonna happen I once went to a convention with uh, it was in New York it was a talk convention and a guy called Mike Francesca Francesca he's a I talk know, show he's a sports guy sports, he's a sports guy, guy. Sports guy yeah, yeah. yeah very very and, good and I interviewed him for for a podcast and yeah. he said to me that the top rated shows on US TV are award shows and sports shows and yeah. he said the reason for that is because you don't know what the outcome's going to be and that's what radio live radio is you listen because you don't know what's going to happen next and you listen to your show you really don't know what's going to happen next because i don't graham i, I don't <laughs> and you just you don't know because i just feel like and people will say to me and i got a lot of this in my ear you know i'm sure you got a lot of people telling you what you should do what you shouldn't do you know what why do you have to do it live just do a podcast i said because there's something you get a feeling. It's a feeling. I've been doing this since I was 15. You go into the studio and you crack that mic and you don't know what's, you know, oh, look at this story. Oh, I love this story. I'm going to do this one now instead of the one I planned out to do. You know what I mean? And you're right. It's like walking a tightrope. It's exciting. And you know it's what exciting. else I love about it? Yeah. It's done. When yeah. It's done. No it's editing. <laughs> no editing. Just goodbye. See you tomorrow. It may have sucked, but guess what? I may try again tomorrow. It might suck exactly. tomorrow, but I hope it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, just, I love live radio. I just love it. I miss it. I think yeah. it's great. So that's why you can bring it to the stream and do it the way you want. And yeah. people seem to be gravitating towards it. So that's kind of nice to know that they kind of get. And, and in this environment, they need a guy like you. They need people who can give them some sort of, uh, you know, a little fun. It's yeah, that's, it's it's just, it's yeah, it's they they they've sucked all the fun out of it, and and yeah. they they've these formats and stuff, and you know where they and, and a lot of times you're given this this format where you've got to do this here and then then the clock here and then you've got two minutes and you got thirty seconds and then you got to hit this hard thing out here and whatever. And I said to a boss once, I said, you know what you're doing, you're strangling it. You've yeah. got to give it air and let it breathe. Because if you if you take that air away from it, it just loses something and becomes almost predictable. It's a formula. And you can yeah. see why guys who don't know how to do it, which are the guys that become the bosses, you see why they <laughs> like the formula, because right, right. they would think that's heaven. Wow, yeah. great. You're going to tell me exactly where to say stuff and whatever. But for guys like, like Jonathan Brandmeier, that's, you're strangling it. You, you've got to yeah. give it air and let it breathe. Yeah. I will tell you, you, I mean, what you're saying today is just like so dead on. It's sort of like, um, I, I, I always suck, really, really suck when someone is telling me what to do and when to do it. And the perfect example is my TV show. I had a TV show called Johnny Be on the Loose. People, maybe nobody ever saw it. I don't know. I, what it's, it, bits of it are on YouTube. Bits yeah, are on, yes, yeah, I see. Yeah. And, and I, I literally remember going out there and just staring at the camera like, what? because I said no to it 10 times. I hung up on Fred Silverman, one of the biggest program directors in television. I decided I'm not doing it. I'm not doing this show five days a week. I got concerts. I got a radio show. I don't want to do it. I remember being in a meeting at NBC and I was saying, um, they were all talking about my big special at the Chicago Theater introduced me on network television on NBC. Remember, Brandon Tartikoff brought me in. Fred Silverman brought me in. Those are two of the biggest guys in television. So I'm thinking I'm in good hands. Yeah. I get in this room. 
And they're all saying, well, we could bring Phil Collins in, drop him in with the piano. I'm not making some of this stuff up. Uh, we could bring him in. We could fly the piano in and then bring Phil Collins down. We could bring this guy in. We could bring that guy in. I, can go, I know I can get Letterman to come on and maybe do something. They're saying stuff like that. And then everybody's talking, 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 talking. And then they said, so, Johnny, what do you think about it? And there's silence. And I just go, uh, well, it just seems to me like we're spending a lot of money on stuff for me and people don't even know who I am. Maybe just as we just take that money and do a local show like Oprah did. She just started in Chicago. She did a Chicago show. Yeah. yeah. Well, Let, worldwide. Let's see, what, let's see what happens after that. Let's just, and there's silence in the room. You can see, I remember all the eyes are looking around all you. And he goes, why don't you and your partner, they point to me and Fred Silverman. Why don't you and your partner go out and talk about it? Now we're in the NBC Burbank building. It's hallways up and down, quiet environment. Fred walks out. You know, if you know the story about Fred, he's now departed. Right. But he uh, yelled a lot. Right. <laughs> and uh, we just didn't see it. I did the Sonny and Cher show. I mean, he was on Time Magazine Programmer of the Year. You know, he was he's a big, big man, big historical guy. I give him nothing but credit for that. He puts his arm around me. He goes, wow. We're walking down the hall and NBC he goes, you are, you're a real negotiator. You, you really are. We come in with a national television special. And we walk out with a fucking local show. <laughs> and, wow. and all the heads popped out of the hallway doors. What, what, what's going on? That's how loud he was. That's how loud he was. We went back in and during the meeting. We said, this, look, we're going to talk more about it. And that was the end of it. That's, that was it. And we did the special. We did it. And it got killer reviews. Guess right. how many hours that took? It took... To do one show, one 60 minute show took three straight days. Wow. Three straight days. So I wow. wrote a letter. I wrote a note to Tartikoff, Brandon Tartikoff. I said, This is not what I signed on for. We were supposed to be, because I had just done the late show. I filled in for Joan Rivers for a couple of weeks. And everyone was trying to offer me a television job. And so I go, Okay. And uh, I said, Brandon, this is not what I signed on for. I thought it was going to be like live, like the late show on Fox was. We were live on national television at eight o'clock at night. Think about that. Live. That's what drove me. Yeah. It was live. I was like, Oh, this is wild. I'm, and 44 minutes later, it was done. Goodbye. That's the radio vibe. That's what television was. But I said, No. And then Brandon said to me, In effect, I have the facts. Because it's on wax facts, you know, that old wax. Yeah, yeah, thing. yeah. I got that. And he, he said, um, just bear with Fred. Just bear with us, for Fred, for a while. Syndication means, and he wrote $4 sign. Syndication means blah, 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 blah. And uh, I'll take care of Fred. Okay. Then he got into an accident. Brandon did. He, he and his uh, daughter. And I uh, never heard from him again. He joined Paramount, was the head of Paramount Productions. And that was the end of it. And then my show went on. Fred said, we sold your show to uh, Natby. What show? You know, that special we did. We sold it. And you're going to be on five nights a week. Guess what time I'm going to be on? 6 p.m. Access television here in the United States. 6 p.m. is Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> me running around with hidden cameras and a dog in my hand, answering Korean restaurants, if you can cook this dog for me. At 6 p.m. <laughs> Oh my God. You knew that was going to fail. Why would we even waste our time? I just, I hated every second of it, but there was some weird stuff that came out of it. And it's like you said, some of it shows up on YouTube and, and um, some comics who will come in and talk with me and they'll say, I just saw that thing, man. I really like this. Like, okay, maybe like two bits we did stuck out out of six weeks, but it was, uh, it was an experience that, uh, was That's, that the go, show? Was that the show where you had the 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 two guys who claimed to be the sailor who kissed the nurse in the no, famous no, that was photo? The local show, yeah. The uh, the guy who said he kissed the girl on the cover of Life magazine, the nurse, and then another guy said he's the one who kissed the girl on Life magazine. We got them both to argue together. They that hated each other. <laughs> they hated each other. <laughs> this was that yeah. picture, the end of the Second World War in New York. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And one of them said he was the sailor, and the other one said, no, he was the sailor. Yeah. And they th each thought the other one was a fraud. And they yeah. were, and you were just loving it. You were like the ringmaster of this fight. Yeah. Of these two I old geezers. That was fun. That was fun. That was a local show. I, I really enjoyed doing that show. Right. Um, yeah, they're just fighting over who was the, the most iconic picture in the history of Life magazine. There's the sale of the World War II ends. I did it. Oh, I did it, you son of a bitch. I'm the one who kissed her. You didn't kiss her. And I'm just like, what the hell? I, well, okay. 
Yeah. Because I heard, I first heard that bit on the radio. So you must have done them on the radio as yeah. well. That's right. That's yeah. right. It was, it was. I see. The one thing with me is you may have noticed. This, I don't like to let things go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> once I started, I go. Okay, wait a minute. That's not enough for me. And by the way, in the old, in the old, uh, the newer version of radio where you had. You know, like you said, all these setups and it's quick and it's got to be done. You couldn't follow up. You couldn't build it. The audience could see us trying to build something and they liked that. Yeah. They liked it gives them a reason to hang it. around. It gives them a reason yeah. to come back. Yeah. yeah. Instead of and all this remember, science. Yeah. Yeah, but Graham, I wasn't doing it in a way that, hey, man, if I can just get past the quarter hour, they're going to come <laughs> with me. I didn't give a rat's ass. I'm doing it because I'm trying to think thinking out loud. What are we going to wait a minute? This old man is mad at this old man. Hey, get that old man, the other old man on the phone. Let's get those two talking. And then, yeah. And then people would call up and say, no, you got to get the nurse. Oh, wait a minute. You got an idea. Get the nurse. You see, they're in on it. Yeah. And you don't have that today. So if you can do something live, it's, uh, it's always much better. There's no doubt about it. But everyone's afraid of it. And now what you got on the live versions of all talk shows, all angry white men saying the exact same thing. Yeah. All angry white men saying the exact same thing. Same thing every day. You heard one, you heard them all. That's the end of it. Yeah. You why I mean? is that? I asked, uh, I, who oh. the, I had a guess. I had uh, Michael Harrison, the, the editor of Talkers. I had him uh, on the show and I asked him that question. I said, what, why is so much of, of AM radio in America? These, these is, is AM, does it stand for angry man? I mean, what, 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 what is, why is that? I mean, yeah. TV seems to have the more liberal personalities like, you know, Jimmy Kimmel and, and Bill Maher, yeah. but radio has these, these to the right of center, angry men. Why is that? And he just said, he reckoned it was a, a point of view that was underrepresented in, in US media or something. And so it, it, it I, I, I don't know. Was that, know. did you get pressure for that when you, with the Westwood One show? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, your I show because... wasn't like that, but a lot of the stations oh. that took the show were yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. More political. I remember the very, that guy you talked to, uh, Mr. McVeigh, uh, you know, the very first show we did uh, on Westwood One, which is more, I mean, people who don't understand this, it was a more, uh, like we said, angry political time. Trump was beginning to run for president. And uh, you had Donald on the show. I know that. Yeah. That's yeah. Correct. Yeah. Because, you know, you were just, it was, I was asking him if he was going to release, if he were to become president, would he release? Um, Richard Simmons from his hostage situation, <laughs> from his home <laughs> housekeeper, something like that. It was like stupid. So yeah. um, uh, the, 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 what were we talking about? West, oh, the lie. Oh yeah. The political stuff. So the very first show um, you speak of Jimmy Kimmel, uh, David Lee Roth was on the uh, Jimmy Kimmel show and he comes out there to do his live performance with the band and he breaks his nose. And I thought, that's completely nuts. So I called Jimmy, get Jimmy on, because everybody was reporting what happened. What happened to his nose and nobody understood. And Jimmy explained what happened. So I yeah. have a meeting. Yeah. Uh, Johnny, I mean. Oh, Johnny, listen. Uh, <laughs> you, uh, they, 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 I got a lot of complaints from the affiliates that you're talking to Jimmy Kimmel about David Lee Roth's nose being broken. And I said, yeah, that's news. That's, it's like, News to me, it's 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 in the news. It's news. That's not the kind of news we want. Not news. News. <laughs> it's not. That's not the kind of news news we want. You know, we got to be more political. So uh, yeah, that's a guarantee. Then then, see you later, buddy. Right. They didn't, didn't work. It's out. funny thing about that part. That part. Westwood One. There's two things about it. Uh, one, you should have seen my clock, Graham. Only you and people on radio will get it. the clock was unbelievable. Bing, boom, boom, boom. So the first time I was on. I just thought, well, I can just kind of miss that break that I always did, and I'd go to the next break, right? Yeah, and I get the calls. You just knocked 115 stations out of sync because you missed your break, right? It's like, oh, okay, shit, oh, okay. <laughs> so um, uh, I would, uh, I was proud of that, that I actually could do that. Yeah, because you I got started. really quite good at that, actually, boom, to boom, be boom, fair. Boom, boom. Yeah, yeah that, I thought I did. And yeah, that's you not, did. I, yeah. I don't, I'm not proud of it, it's, but I'm just like, wait a minute. I can get, I, I just proved I could do syndicated radio. Ding, boom, bomb, boom, 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 boom. Did I like it? No. But did I, did I kind of enjoy the, the challenge of it? Sure. I'll get this in. In 30 seconds, I'm going to get it in. Boom, 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 boom. So I think there's something to brevity. I get that. I understand that. Uh, but I did do that. But I remember um, I got fired through an email, but not from me. They emailed uh, our business guy and he said, just tell him he's fired. Okay. 
that was from the head of Westwood One. And when wow. I went to the Hall of Fame in New York, guess who the first guy to kneel down, kneel down at my table at Westwood One was the guy who fired me. That's well, you know, <laughs> always been a big fan here, man. Congratulations, you know. Uh, I think he's still the boss, whatever his name is, Charlie somebody. I don't know what his name is. You yeah, know what these, I'm talking about. Yeah, these people, they get, they're funny. They get just close enough to it in case it's a success and they can say, I was part of that. But they stay just far enough away. If it doesn't work, they go, oh, no, that's nothing to do with me. Yeah. I mean, I, they are geniuses that keep them in there. And the consultants, who has it said a consultant is a guy who'll steal your watch and tell you the time? <laughs> yeah, listen, why don't you write a book about radio? Because everything you're saying is like, you know, I thought of it, but I never knew how to articulate it. I think you've certainly done a fantastic job of that, Mr. Graham Mack. The G-Mac attack is in full of force. Holy wow. smokes. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's like, wow. And in Hollywood, they're better. They're, they just, they back away slowly. Failure? Right. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Goodbye. Later, <laughs> right? They just they wait out here. Oh yeah. Anyway, Graham, sorry, I fired me at that other station. They don't care. They just back away. They back away slowly. That's what they do, man. Oh my God. So how does the new show make money, Johnny? I <laughs> wait a second. I gotta make a note of this. How does the new show make money? Yeah. yeah no, now you're not so funny, are you, smartass? Because you're not making any money. Yeah. Answer his fucking question. <laughs> okay. Hold on a minute. <laughs> um, I do not know. I haven't the slightest idea. And the one thing I kept saying was we're building the plane while we're flying it. So yeah. we got a plane, yeah. we're in it, we're flying it, but I don't know where it's going to go. And some, it's thrilling. And yet for, uh, you know, the family, yeah, it's fun, isn't it? Fun when you don't make any money. Isn't it, honey? <laughs> oh, yeah, Lisa, it is. Okay, so... um. Yeah, how I don't know what there's things out there. You know, we're seeing all these big deals going down and this and that. I don't know what to do. I was offered a couple of radio stations that, you know, I could put my stuff on. And I thought, I don't know what I want to do with that. Then I was just offered, can you take your archives and just, you know, use those? But I didn't want to do that with just old stuff. I wanted to bring out, you know, new stuff, do, do new shows. So I have like 30 plus years of digitized archives that... um were done by the same guys that did Howard Stern's uh, yeah. Sternthology, all of his yeah. digitation. And, and these the production guys, on the, 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 the archive show you ran the other week, the, the production yeah. on that, that big segment at the beginning that put it all together, the career and everything, so that's those well guys, done. That, that's those so guys. Yeah. good. Yeah. yeah David Height, uh, Davmar, they call themselves. They, then they, they only did it for me and Howard. And uh, it's so good the way, because they, they go, you don't, have any idea how many things you have in here, do you? You have no idea what you've done. I said, not the slightest. <laughs> and we, when we do those shows, those instant request shows, we do a, rec a show where the people will say, hey, I remember when you did this thing. You put that guy in a barrel and a bull pushed him around. Yeah, yeah. Then we go together and we go, I, we listen together and I go, what? Wait a minute. That's not how I remember it, you know? So it's, that's kind of fun, Graham, to do that. But yeah, we have the archives. Uh, we have the live show. We have stuff that we're going to probably be start to, starting to do very soon on YouTube. Um, yeah, great. We're, more right. visual, more crazy stuff. So I think there's a, it's a great world we're living in. It really is. And if anything um, good could come out of it, I guess we were in the right place at the right time. And I just decided to build this studio because everybody kept telling me they're going to be either the last guy told me we're building the studio for you. And then they never got back to me. One guy said, I'm leasing the studio to you that I could build my own studio in, but he never got back to me. So I just right. woke up one day and I go, this is ridiculous. I have to take control of this. I have to do this myself. And I didn't know anything about it. There was no pandemic in sight. Yeah. I just had it ready to go. And when it would hit and I couldn't get out and I couldn't get out, I go, we're, we're just doing it now. But there's no plan. You don't have a plan. There's no, we have to have a plan. I go, here's the plan. I'm going to tweet out one thing. Excuse me. I, we Facebook and our email database. We just went out and we just said, hey, we're live tomorrow. Yeah, Saturday, I got the email. Time. You're not, dreaming, we're, we're You're, yeah. You're not dreaming, we're streaming. You're not dreaming, we're streaming. You also, I think in that email you sent me, a Johnny B, a wireless for the virus. <laughs> yeah. Wireless for the virus, grab back. <laughs> yeah. You're one of the good guys, man. I really like you. I really enjoy you. I think you're talented as hell. And um, the London and the radio, whoever they have you, uh, 
whoever has you working with them you know, should be happy to have you. I'm telling you, you're one of the good ones. Johnny, it's a, it's a pleasure to talk to you. You've been a major influence on my radio career. You are just a shining light in a in a shit industry, really. <laughs> you are really just a beacon of hope for us all. Uh, the Jonathan Brian Meyer Showcast, it goes out live on Saturdays at 10 a.m. in Chicago, 4 p.m. in the U.K. It's also a podcast. Get everything you need to know at brandmeyershow.com. <laughs> Grandma! Ooh! Grandma is back! What an attack!